morning there. Piece of big flag. Not taking a Ford today. We're going to be driving the Wifey's Duramax. And why we're driving the Duramax is because, A, I don't think the Ford would fit through the feed mill where we're going because <laughs> it's a little too wide. And then on top of that, the uh, six-speed Cummins, uh, well, with the tonic cover on, I'd have to unsnap it all because I'm getting quite a bit of feed. And I'm only going about five minutes away, so I figured it'd be quicker just to grab this thing. This thing runs awesome, guys. Last day to enter is today. Last day to enter is today. So we're on our way to go pick up some hog feed and some chicken feed. Good news is our chicken started laying eggs already, which is crazy. I don't remember, maybe you guys remember more than me. I don't know, I feel like I have so much going on that I lose track of time. But I do not feel like we've had those chickens in six months. But they're already laying eggs, so um, that's cool. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna go pick up some feed, and then after that, I'm not 100% sure. I do know that my grandpa is still in town, and I thought he was planning on hanging out with me most of the day. And if you're wondering why that airbag light's on, it's because this has turned the airbag off for the passenger side. <laughs> I love seeing tractors filling up at the local fuel station around here. Like, you just, I don't know. Life is just a lot slower in this area, and I really like it. Get you another little note here of this Duramax because like I said this is your last day to enter to win this thing. I'm trying to get you guys hooked on it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to slow down because there's a truck in front of me and I'm not so sure he would appreciate me rear-ending him. This is how simple it is to enter. One last time, this is the last time you're gonna hear me talk about this Duramax. Every $5, there's 10 entries to win. Link in the top of the description, dieselbabegear.com. It's my wife's truck giveaway. It's not one of mine. I'm just trying to help her out with these last few days. So if you guys wanna have the chance to win this truck, don't waste any time. She just got all the rust fix and everything. It's a beautiful truck, and uh, it would make one of you guys a great truck for a long time. Now we're gonna take the six speed. I really don't have much time left with this truck, but, we're gonna go pick up Grandpa, and this is the only truck that has amp steps so he can easily get up in this thing. The Ford, not gonna be a good idea. The Duramax, not a great idea. Just a little bit too much of a jump. We're actually on our way to the farm again, and we're gonna be working on a new spot. It's the spot that we were working on in the previous video, but it's new spot to me, new spot for this upcoming season. But we got a lot of progress on it this morning. Uh, me and Grandpa went out there, I had my brother out there, and a friend of his that works for me, and we got quite a bit done. I'll show you the progress once we get over here. It, I mean, it looks, it looks very different. We're not completely done, but we are getting very close. We're in the home stretch. Just gotta clear out a little bit more brush, a few more branches and down trees and treetops from the logging. But we should be in pretty good shape here soon to get started on planting. We're almost there. This entrance, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with the entrance, if I'm gonna plant this or not. I'm guessing we're just gonna clean this up a little bit and get rid of the mounded up stuff and still plant it, but I don't know. So I was gonna try to get some video today, but I just, I was so focused on wanting to get stuff done. I thought, you know what, I'll just update them on my progress for the people that wanna know. For the people that don't really care so much, then whatever. So this area, as I showed you in the previous time that we were here, we got this pretty much cleared out back to that little cluster of trees towards the back there. Um, you can see the tractor in comparison to the amount of space this is. And the space I'm most excited about though is this spot right here. So this is the main event, like the main spot that I'm trying to get cleared out for a food plot. And it's going to be so, so epic once I get this done. I mean, it's going to be so, so sweet. Uh, the staging area that this is going to create is just awesome. So 
Back out there is the main feeding field. That's where most of the deer feed, but it's usually just after dark whenever we have any kind of real mature deer move out to that field. We've shot plenty of does back there, you know, had tons of young bucks back there over the last several years. Um, but the most mature deer that we have seen on camera and that we have seen on the hoof, like in the stand, most mature buck that I've shot here, which I did not kill. I had one and a half inch penetration on the shoulder blade and it literally just stuck in the bone. And we ended up seeing the deer again two weeks later on camera. He basically just brushed it off and he ended up being fine. And then I thought somebody else shot him the following year. Anyways, it wasn't somebody here, it was one of the neighbors. But he was cutting through this spot before this was here. This was just more mature timber and brush, you know. It was just kind of a weird mixture because it was logged like 10 years ago. So it was starting to mature up, but there were still a lot of areas that were really thick and really brushy. Well, he come walking down this trail right through here, cuts right in front of my stand over here tries to win me, tries to go around the backside, not really sure if he smells me, but he heard you know, my grunt, so he came in, came within 12 yards. He was the biggest deer we had on camera that year. We called him Big Nine, simple name. He was, just, he was a big nine pointer, but probably scored 130 inches, 130, 135. So he wasn't a giant, but for us here, that would have been the biggest deer shot here yet. So I mean, for me, I was super, super stoked when I finally saw him on the hoof. I was like, this is the deer, this is the deer, because I had passed him up a year before when he was not as big, we just called him, you know, oh, you know that decent nine pointer that we'd seen? He's like a two year old. He's like, yeah, well, I just had him walk by at 40 yards, but he was on the neighbor's property. So I just let him walk on by. That's what you should do if you're hunting property lines due to them just being a good location to hunt, like a good pinch point or whatever. And you don't have much other places to go. Sometimes it's, it's fine to hunt property lines, but when you're shooting the deer off the neighbor's property, that's where I draw the line. It's just, you don't do that. Even if it's like, oh, well, he's like one hoof on their side, you know, it's like, if it's too borderline, I'm not about that kind of stuff. Like I know it's tempting and it takes a lot of discipline to say no when it's a nice deer. And you're like, dude, it's just me and the trees. You know what I mean? But principles are principles and you gotta stick to what you know is right and what you believe. I'm not that type of guy. I don't go that low when it comes to hunting, but that's just me. All that being said, historically a good location back in here. So I wanna get this all cleaned out and get this opened up, get some food in here. There's so much to do. Like I'm so close yet there's so much to do still. It's just, it's crazy. But I'm super excited to get back here in September. Might save this spot for more like October, but I don't know, we'll see. Pretty excited though. Well guys, here it is. All that. The distance is a little bit deceiving. It's a lot farther than it looks from me to that center, more gray tree there in the center, right there. That's probably about, I wanna say 65 yards. It's a decent length plot. It's probably about 65 yards long and the average width would I would say is about in the narrow spot here at most 10 yards and then in the middle section where it goes it rounds out quite a bit it's probably more along 15 to 20 yards wide um, and then it pretty much stays about the same width for the rest of the plot we don't have anything to plan in here today but I wanted to get this all dug up that way it can kind of breathe and dry a little bit and that way maybe tomorrow the day after I can come in here and get it another good till after it's had couple hours in the morning to really dry and get it a little more fine so we can throw our plot seed in here and get this really really well set in the dirt there so that when we get this heavy rain this weekend we have a perfect seed bed to get this stuff to grow now I'm not going to be planting anything that's too sophisticated it's going to be more of a brassica slash turnip mix and that's what I want to plant in here because it's a very hardy plant and it does really good in wet soil, dry soil, shady, sunny, high pH, low pH, all that stuff. So that's what we're gonna go with in here. Not to mention, we've got alfalfa out there, we've got clover in other spots, we've got standing corn, we've got standing beans. Pretty much like a purple top turnip or just your traditional turnip or radishes. We don't have really anything like that anywhere else on the property this year. So this is probably gonna be that location right here. Hopefully it all turns out great and uh, we can get some deer in here this season. Corn and beans are working. There's a big doe there browsing in the beans. It's gonna keep on rolling by so she doesn't get spooked. As long as 
long as you keep driving by and if you're on like a tractor or an ATV or something around here, they don't usually blow off. You can still see in the background there's no tails running off and she would be running that way if she's trying to get back into the timber because otherwise there's only a pond behind her. She can't run across it. Pretty cool to see. I kind of figured we were going to see a deer so I had my camera ready and I was like about to hit record and I'm like I'll just wait in case we see something and then I'll get it ready. Well as soon as we come around the corner of course there's a deer. You couldn't see the fawns but I guarantee you she had fawns with her. There's a doe that has triplets who's always right there along those beans almost every single day on camera. For everybody needing an update on the Hellcat and who won that has not been yet announced, but it should be by tomorrow's video. However, at the time I'm actually filming this video, we haven't called anybody yet, so no, do not assume that they have already been called and that it's not you. Here is an update on RestoGen for everybody that has been wondering where the RestoGen has been the last several videos, why we haven't been doing so much with it recently. Really, we're just waiting on parts. And I've actually already ordered in most of the stuff that I need to complete the interior. Um, I got the door seals on the way, windshield, windshield seal, new seats, new carpet, headliner stuff, Stuff, all that stuff is on the way. It's just taking a little bit of time, but it will be here and then we're gonna be able to knock out a bunch of stuff on this truck and really get this thing wrapped up. But like now I'm wondering, what do I do with this truck? Do I actually keep it for myself or do I keep the Whistling Diesel Dually that I'm supposed to be picking up? I'm so torn because like I told everybody I wanna keep this truck for me, but I also had no idea that that truck was gonna be going up for sale and that I could be buying that one as well. I can't keep them all, that's the thing. I don't need multiple trucks to do pretty much one thing, which is pull the trailer occasionally to pick stuff up. But other than that, they'll just sit in the shop and get dust. But I did also just have somebody stop by and quote me for asphalt for the whole front part of our driveway. So what do you guys think? Is asphalt like a dumb investment or is it worthwhile long-term? Let me know, do you guys enjoy seeing the pieces of the white cell habitat stuff, like putting time out there, uh, clearing out food plots and clearing out areas and doing the planting and the prep work and all that stuff. Do you guys enjoy that stuff or not? If you do, let me know. I also have an outdoors channel. I haven't really filmed for it in several months now, but it is Brotherhood Outdoors. Link's usually always in the description somewhere. It's almost at 20,000 subscribers, I think. I haven't checked on it in a long time, but anyways, if you guys wanna see a lot of outdoor stuff, if it's gonna be like full-blown outdoor stuff, like beginning to end of the video, I'll probably post it on that channel at some point here. I'd love to get back into the swing of it. If you guys wanna know what my true passion is, trucks are probably the second thing on my list. My number one thing, just being outside and doing outdoor stuff, like hunting, prep work, tractor work, I mean food plot stuff, cutting wood, like I, I just love being outside and even if it's hot, if it is scorching hot, if I had to choose between working on a tractor or cutting wood or being out in the woods in the heat or working on a truck in a shop, I would rather be out in the woods. And it sounds more miserable to some people, they're like, ew, bugs and freaking dirt and just hot and sweaty, no thank you. But then like to me, I'm like, it doesn't feel that bad because I love doing it so much, you know? But uh, the truck thing has just panned out a lot better for me in terms of a passion that became more of a business. I really love both, but I really, really love the outdoor stuff. I'll catch you in the next video, peace.